What's up everybody, this is Jack Sputnik here and I'm excited to have you here because I'm waiting to have my hands on R5 and R6 new Canon insane bodies and just right here behind me I have something awesome look at this guys super long lenses something brand new super fresh and when I have my hands on these guys I definitely share some news with you but so far I'm waiting, I'm waiting for other journalists to finish testing. We will take a look at ISO, at some you know, first shots, at this insane dual pixel version two autofocus system. So man, there's a lot of exciting things to wait for, but I see you after intro. <laughs> I got them, they are here, they are here, just right here. So you can take a look, maybe first like that. And you know what? Let's watch some B-roll now. They are so good looking. So this is it, I have my hands on R5 and this camera is awesome. I already had some uh, time to play with it, like the lenses look professional, the camera looks really great. The backside of this camera reminds me a lot of times when I used like Canon 5D Mark II, Mark III and you know, all these legendary cameras. So there is definitely some sentimental trip here. Canon finally got there. This mirrorless looks like very serious, you have, you have this you know very handy joystick here you have this classic dial button here and set button here that we all know and love and though I normally use Sony uh, I gotta say I'm impressed with this camera and Sony guy can say like I'm holding something something real right now like something that can be really serious ergonomically and when it comes to like quality build quality it really looks awesome and on R5 you have this top uh, LED panel where you can change the mode from AV or AV to, to 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 manual or any other mode. And on R6, the cheaper version of it, you have like the classic dial button. You know this 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 PASM uh, dial. So generally speaking, I'm impressed, but I'm really waiting to see in the studio the real results and take a look and uh, do ISO tests right now. Okay. So, see you soon. We are back in the studio and I gotta say, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with what I've seen. We did some uh, build quality tests, 4K performance test video. Uh, we know a lot about overheating problems. We know a lot about battery life. We know a lot about high ISO performance. We got autofocus tracking and phase detection tests done. And then I want to share some conclusions with you. So I have all this data written down here on my computer and some test video that you will soon see. So let's get right into it. R5 is an equivalent of Canon 5D and R6 is an equivalent of Canon 6D. And same goes for weather sealing. So uh, R5 is weather sealed as 5D is, so it's built to last. And generally speaking, build quality of R5 is much better. R6 is a good camera, I'm not saying it's, there's something wrong about it, but it feels a little bit, you know, plasticky and it, it's not built as well, as, as good as R5. You can feel the difference when you touch these cameras, when you see them, immediately you can feel that those cameras are just different. And R6 is water sealed as 6D is, so it is water, water sealed, it is built to you know, to work in different conditions, but it's not as weather sealed as R5. So, this is very easy to understand. R5 is a mirrorless 5D and R6 is a mirrorless 6D, basically. Now let's talk about 4K performance. And you can see right now a test video, nothing interesting, just a, a bush, but I gotta say I'm impressed with the quality because out of the camera, this is R6 4K video and the performance is very well, the colors are very accurate. I didn't change anything, it's just, you get this camera, you start shooting in 4K mode, and this is the look you get. 
There's no grading, there's no like fancy profiles on it. It's just, it's just something straight out of the camera. So I'm impressed. And when it comes to image stabilization, I just followed for a while this track writing. Uh, I think this is some kind of post track, you know, like delivering post. And, and I was just basically running with, my, with this camera in hand. So the weather, like, uh, not weather, <laughs> image stabilization seems to work pretty well, though it has to be tested and very important that image stabilization, which is something big about this camera because it is one of the best image stabilization ever uh, available in mirrorless cameras or basically in the cameras. So it will depend how it works on the lens you will, you will use. So you can see a little chart here where Canon basically lets you know that, okay, if you use this lens, image stabilization will give you this efficiency. If you use these lenses, it will give you this efficiency. So you can take a look at that. And this is very important that not every lens will give you this, this you know, crazy image stabilization efficiency. The next thing is overheating. And of course, we didn't have enough time to, uh, to make like, like super, super in-depth test of it. But we have some data about it, about overheating, and this can be an issue. But hey, like, let's, let's face it, like you get, in, in case of R5, you get an option of shooting 8K. So having this option, if, if you need 8K anyways, <laughs> then, then you have to prepare that this is a small, small body, small camera, and it will overheat. Anywhere between 23 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius outside, and you can you can record 8K for 20 minutes. During hot days, it can drop down to 16, and if you go to 40 degrees, it will drop down to 11 minutes. So that is something to keep in mind. But you may be more interested in 4K in 120 frames per second, so slow motion 4K. It is 15 minutes during like normal temperature between 23, 30. And anything about 35, you know, when it's a hot day, you will go eight minutes. So eight minutes of slow motion 4K. When it comes to 4K 60p, it's 25 minutes during like normal temperature. I mean, normal for me. <laughs> and it will drop down to 17 minutes when it's, when the day is really hot. Then you got 4K in 30 frames per second. You can record 30 minutes and it will drop down to 20 minutes during a very hot day. And finally, let's talk a little bit about full HD. We got 60 frames and uh, during like normal day, there's no limit and it can drop to 40 minutes and even 27 minutes, but if the day is really hot. So basically, if you went to Morocco and you want to record full HD in 60 frames per second, this can drop to 27 minutes, but in most situations you can, you can record without limits or the limit will be around 71 minutes or can drop to 40 minutes in, during a very hot day. But still, I think that for this type of a camera, it's a very good performance. Overheating problem, I would say, is, is mainly connected to 4K slow motion and 8K, obviously, because it's a you know, huge thing going on there. When it comes to battery life, this thing is hungry and you have to remember that um, it will not give you such a beautiful battery life like for example Sony A7 Mark III. I hope it will even be improved with Sony A7S III. Uh, to be specific on, uh, you know, electronic viewfinder, you can go at 120 frames per second refresh rate, you can go 250 shots and if you go down to 60 frames per second, it will do 380 shots. And on LCD, it's getting better. So it's 30, 350 shots at the standard mode and lower power saving mode, you can go to 510 shots. But basically it seems to me at least if like, for example, weddings is your thing. If you're a wedding photographer, you will definitely need a grip, which is available and it will double the life of uh, your camera. Then we have high ISO performance. And this is interesting because I tested it from 100 through 200, 400, 800, you know, 1600 and 3200 up to, you know, this highest value possible there. And I'm impressed because surprisingly to me, 
um, footage is usable up to 12,800 ISO value. This is insane, like, I mean, performance is really good and I'm hoping that Sony will answer with A7S III that the performance will be as good as on this camera, but anyways, like, I'm not comparing these cameras because it's not yet there, but what we have, you can take a look at the sample videos and you can tell for yourself. And this performance is also very good with photos. Now, let's talk about autofocus tracking and face detection. I have these points written down here, it's all fresh, so I didn't have, you know, time to, to stick it all in my head, but put it on in my head, but we did some tests, I mean, we, we with, my, with my friend Christoph, we did some tests of autofocus tracking, he helped me with that, and you can see a test video, it, 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 like eye tracking and face tracking works very good, both in video, as you can see, like I'm jumping, running, you know, I'm disappearing from the frame and I'm appearing back and, you know, trying to, to, to you know, make this Canon thing crazy. So it, 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 it should lose me, but it doesn't. So it works very well. So all this, you know, like hype about like this dual pixel system version two. Yeah, it works good. I gotta say that. And very important, works great with photos, like we did some portraits, we did some test portraits with it, and I have to say, it's just flawless. The, the only thing I would, I would have maybe against this autofocus system that, you know, it's, it's kind of menu, it's a little bit difficult to get used to it. So some systems, like, like for example, if you switch from Sony to Olympus, let's say, it was, it is always very easy to me to find my way through and to, you know, get used to this autofocus system. But with Canon, you have to adjust a little bit if you're not already shooting with Canon. If you already do, it's, it's just the same thing, but it is a little bit complicated and it's something to remember, but the, 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 the like the way it works is just awesome. And very important, you also can take a look at the touch screen operations so you can touch uh, at the different, you know, touch different parts of the screen and, you know, focus works beautifully. One of the things I love about these new Canons is that uh, both R5 and R6 give you this option of smooth adjustment of really like autofocus responsiveness. So um, on Sony, for example, you get only three settings, but here you have a smooth scale so you can really adjust, you know, how focus reacts to touch operation very smoothly according to your needs and this is something something really cool and you can see it how it works on a video here um, I was really impressed it's very you know responsive but uh, you can you can make it more like like fast or more cinematic you know like slow so this is something really cool so autofocus good job Canon really really awesome conclusions R5 and R6 are the best cameras we've seen from Canon f since long time. You can probably hear my son, he's somewhere around running. And I gotta say that I love build quality of R5. R6 maybe not that much, but it's still an awesome camera with lots of possibilities. If you want to know my personal opinion, I would probably prefer to see R5 uh, without 8K, maybe with 6K, uh, because I don't feel there's a great need for 8K anyways but at the lower price tag. And same for R6. So I would like to see R6 at a lower price tag because for the moment, those cameras are expensive and generally speaking, Canon system is expensive. I'm not saying it's bad because like, you know, the amount of uh, lenses is growing really fast. Canon is, you know, catching up with this mirrorless, um, you know, revolution, if you can say that in photography with this, you know, mirrorless change. But if you want to, you know, like uh, get into Canon system right now, it is pretty expensive and we have to, as videographers and photographers, we have to remember about that. But all in all, I love those cameras. I can recommend it. And, you know, ergonomics are better now. Uh, you know, we have the joystick back. We have this dial uh, wheel at the uh, back side of the camera right now which uh, reminds of 5D and 6D, and those solutions work great on those cameras and are working great on mirrorless cameras. I thought that this year would be lost, but hey, we have R5 and R6 from Canon, and we are waiting for A7S III or A7 III S from Sony, 
And you know, like a lot of guys out there, videographers specifically have, have like a lot of hopes regarding this camera. And I really, I am really happy that this is happening because the more competition out there, the more benefits for us, photographers and videographers. Now we have the choice. We can choose from Canon, from Sony, from Olympus, from Panasonic. We have full frame mirrorless crop sensors. We have micro four thirds. We have this choice and it's growing and Canon is finally seriously into mirrorless market. Definitely R5 and R6 are really nice cameras to look at. Guys, to conclude, if I forget about something, if I didn't mention some important things that you feel that other guys in this community should know about specifically R5 and R6 cameras, uh, let me know in the comments below. I really want to hear your comments or your observations if you already had your hands on those cameras or you read something interesting in the internet that photographers and videographers out there should know about. Okay, so just let me know. Don't forget to smash the thumb up, leave you know comments, subscribe. And this is Jack Sputnik and I see you guys, of course, in the next episode.